What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever face-off brought to you by Second Opinion Productions. Gaming is our passion. Podcasting is our profession. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Skelly. What's up, Skelly? What's good, people? Man, dude, I'm excited about this. Um, this is a new video segment that me and Skelly are going to start doing. Um, I don't know exactly our time schedule of when we're going to bring these out, but like, I'm just I'm really excited because we tried to do stuff like this in the past, and I think it was called uh, Head to Head. We talked about it um, on the podcast, and it didn't ever really take off. But now we're going to get into it, and we're going to start off swinging with the very first episode. Now, face oh, off, oh, what oh, we only, do... The only reason we're doing these two, just to let people know, is because if you've listened to our show, me and Caleb have gone off on this, um, these two games yeah. for as long as I can remember. So we're going to go yeah. ahead and start off our first episode with this. Yeah. Um, and like I said, in the video segment, we set two games against each other. We talk about the series as a whole, how many titles have been out, uh, graphics, gameplay, what we liked about it, what we hated about it, and so on and so forth. Um, now, I will tell you, there there may be a winner, there may not be a winner, it may be like a, I gotta agree to disagree. <laughs> oh no, there will be a um, winner, and the name of this game is Skelly Wins. No, no, that's... Not the name of the game. Always <laughs> is, buddy. Um, all right, so uh, obviously you guys know what we're talking about. We're talking about the Elder Scrolls versus World of Warcraft. Not just World uh, of Warcraft. 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 The entire Warcraft universe. universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even talk. Uh, it's okay. So we can, uh, you want to start out by talking about the, the yeah, titles? Yeah, we're going to definitely get right into this um, and talk about, you know, how many titles of each series there are. Because um, we, bo we both know and everyone out there knows that the Elder Scrolls series and Warcraft started about the same time, um, right around 1994. Um, Warcraft has had roughly about, what, like 12 titles since then, um, roughly, give or take. Um and it started in 94 with the original um, Warcraft Orcs vs. Humans, which basically started out like one of the... It was a really good game for its time. Um, I recently just went back and tried to play it, but couldn't really get into it again. Um, but that's laid the groundwork and kept Blizzard afloat for so many years, leading up into um, Warcraft 2, um, Tides of Darkness, and then even into their um, Warcraft 2 Beyond Dark Portal expansion pack that came out in 95 and 1996. Yeah. Um, from there, we did see um, from 97 to about 99, um, not much from Blizzard at all until um, we saw the battle, um, the Battle.net edition of Warcraft 2, which introduced online multiplayer or online game. Um, with Battle.net, which led into, we all know, the Diablo um, Diablo, Diablo 2 Battle.net, if I could talk straight. Um, and then there was also in there a PlayStation and Sega Saturn version of Warcraft 2, which combined both um, Tides of Darkness um, and the expansion Beyond the Dark Portal, um, which did introduce us to Dark um, Outlands. Um, from there in 2002, um, Warcraft 3 which is, to this day, probably the best-selling RTS game in history. Uh, okay. Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. Um, 2002, we did see um, the first expansion, first and only expansion for Warcraft 3, The Frozen Throne, which introduced my favorite character into the series, Arthas. Or, as we all know, he would become the Lich King at the end of Warcraft 3, um, The Frozen Throne. Um from there, um, they went into announce. Well, actually, it was announced in 2001, but started development in 1999. The highest selling PC game in history in World of Warcraft. of mighty kingdoms lies a vast, unexplored world. A world of honor. Danger. 
Um, it was a change of pace for, you know, the series. They went from, like, an RTS-style game um, with e with the eSports um, aspect of it and, you know, that multiplayer aspect of RTS, which we all loved in Warcraft and also StarCraft. It was Blizzard's way of going into an um, MMO and trying to attack EverQuest um, because at the time, EverQuest was still kind of big. Um, so they released in 2004... Um, November of 2004, World of Warcraft, um, which sold more than expected. Um, we'll get into the numbers later. Um, but from there in 2007, they did release their first expansion, The Burning Crusade, um, which introduced, you know, the Dark Portal um, event and all of that. Um, from there in 08, we got the Wrath of the Lich King, still my favorite expansion to <laughs> this day. Um, only because everyone know that knows me knows that the Death Knights and um, the Lich King are my favorite part of um, the WoW universe. Um, then we get into 2010. They actually changed the, um, the world of Warcraft, as they call it, um, in Cataclysm. Then in 2012, um, probably the... I, they introduced a lot of good stuff um, in this game, but... Um, it's probably one of the most laughed at games by ever made by Blizzard, and that is Mists of Pandaria expansion. Um, from there, they went a different route. Um, they discontinued the um, card game, the World of Warcraft card game, which you, a lot of people didn't even know, didn't even know existed, um, unless you bought collector's editions and got the cards in it. Um, they came out with um, Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft, which my opinion is probably one of the most addictive games I've played on PC in a it long is. time, minus World of Warcraft. Yeah. Um, you can see me at work sometimes getting yelled at because I'm playing on one of our tablets. Um, <laughs> and then from there, the last part of the Warcraft universe that uh, came out last year in 2014 um, was Warlords of Draenor, um, which opens up the game a lot more. It was amazing <laughs> we have a ton and there's still a few unreleased games there was their first ever point and click um warcraft adventures lord of the clans which yeah. was supposed to be released in 1998 but right before e3 um because they didn't think it was up to blizzard standards some people out there said it was because they were scared of the competition and didn't want to release it but um the it was like a single game. player style. Yeah, it was right? a single player um, point and click. Um, War of the Craft Adventures, Lords of the Lord of the Clans, which yeah. is kind of like a. It kind of looked like a cartoon almost, um, yeah. but mm, that didn't come to fruition. They re they shelved that when it was they. What they're saying is they shelved it right before E three in ninety eight, when it was just about complete. Yeah. So they had a completed game. That because they, th and this is one of the things I love about Blizzard. They were just Blizzard. really weary about it. Yeah, and this is what I love about Blizzard, being the company they are. And this is one of the reasons I love them is because they have a game that is just about ready to come out, ready for release. There might be a few bugs they got to tweak, which, you know, they were ready to come, you know, out to, you know, develop or out to, re out to release. And they just said, you know what, it's not what we want the game to be, so we're not, we're canceling it. So... That was a pretty big thing to do, too. Yeah, but that's... And there are, you know, outside of the video games and the PC games and, you know, our Xbox 360 or, you know, your PlayStation versions and all that. There are a lot of other, um, like, tabletop games um, and all of that. But gaming-wise, that's pretty much each individual game in the Warcraft universe. From 94 to 2004... Or 2014, that was 20 years of war, of Warcraft, which is ridiculous. Um, and also, at that same time, from 1994 to 2015, there's been a ton of Elder Scrolls games as well. Now, Elder Scrolls did not have, you know, the, the card-based games. They didn't have as many books uh, brought out, uh, or even tabletop games uh, brought out as much as the Warcraft uh, titles did. Uh, but Elder Scrolls has always had a pretty huge following uh, with Bethesda. And Bethesda and Blizzard, I've always really highly respected both of these companies. They're some of the companies out there that, if anything, 
really make other companies push to try and make their games uh, greater to kind of say, you know, it's it's just like, it, and I'm going to talk about this game in just a second about, you know, when Skyrim came out, it blew people's minds because it was such a fantastic first-person title. And Blizzard and Bethesda have always been looked at as those studios that really push the boundaries when it comes down to video game creation. Um, so in the timeline of uh, release years, we have 1994's The Elder Scrolls Arena. And Arena is a labor of love. If you try and go back and play it now, uh, you you become like this grand champion in the Imperial City. Uh, it's a it is it, it's an RPG. It has RPG elements, um, but it's very, very like I said, like it's very basic. Uh, it is a first person uh, style um, adventure, um, and I myself I didn't play arena whenever it came out um i was uh in in 1994 1995 i was all about like doom and some other titles and i didn't get to play games Weren't you as in much diapers as I at that to. time no i wasn't oh. <laughs> I was born in 87 man my bad 87 <laughs> oh you were just getting potty trained that's right yes oh i hate you i'm sorry that you're an old man uh <laughs> anyways so uh after arena came elder scrolls 2 daggerfall and daggerfall was a huge improvement from arena um it was pretty fantastic it was really awesome it had a new engine had a lot of different things um in this title that that arena did not um and you know these these games it had very basic kind of three-dimensional um style uh gameplay it also had it was that mixture between three-dimensional two-dimensional that was like a huge uh was a huge thing for pc gamers at the time uh, Daggerfall was a good game, though. I've actually gone back since uh, I got the Anthology collection uh, and played Daggerfall, and it's pretty awesome. I really, really like the user interface, the graphic capabilities, and so on and so forth. Um, then we had um, an Elder Scrolls Legend, uh, Battle Spire, uh, which I did not play. Uh, it was something... It was something a little different. It came out in... Uh, when did it come out? It came out in 97. Uh, it came out in 97. Uh, it came out for, uh, what'd you say? 97. 97. MS DOS. Uh, and it was actually our action role playing uh, survival horror title. Uh, so it was based in the, it was based in the Elder Scrolls genre, but it was more or less kind of like a horror game. Uh, and uh, it was cool, dude. Like it was, it was totally different from what, what people had played in the title um so i think i think it was a really big a really big step for them to kind of uh go out on a ledge and, and take that chance for making that game so then you had the elder scrolls adventures red guard that came out in 1998 um and i did not play red guard uh but uh, i heard that a lot of people uh really liked the game um it was about 400 years after or no i'm sorry it was 400 years prior to the events of arena so it was cool that they were able to go back uh and uh and, and kind of go back in history which they've done a lot in the elder scrolls series um then you had uh i think three years of nothing you had 1999 2000 2001 there was no titles released but then in 2002 everything changed and morrowind released and it was so good it was so awesome
I remember playing it, and it just like it, it blew my mind, dude. And it came out for the Xbox a couple of months after uh, the PC version. Uh, it came out in May uh, for for PC. It came out in June for Xbox, and it was awesome, dude. Man, it was so so good. Uh, the three dimensional uh, textures, the shadings, uh, you know, this whole kind of like there wasn't many games at the time that really took advantage of the long distance like rendering. Uh, and I think, you know, Bethesda really, really took advantage of that. Uh, there was times like you, you know, obviously at the time the graphics were, you know, we try and go and play back, uh, play back through that time of stuff now, Skelly. And, and we're like, I can't play this. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude. Like legit, you know, like I said earlier, I went to go back and play Warcraft and I'm like, Oh uh, no. But like at the time when Morrowind came out, it was huge, dude. Like I remember playing it and I was like, how the hell did they make this game, dude? How did they make it? Um, but, uh, there was, uh, there was huge uproar for this title. Like it was, it was one of the biggest releases, uh, that Bethesda ever released. Uh, and then they had Elder Scrolls Three Tribunal, which was actually like a, um, it was just a Morrowind expansion pack. Um, it was in the Xbox uh, Game of the Year edition, um, and then the obviously with Windows, it just kind of released as a DLC. Um, but uh, then uh, in 2003, you had Elder Scrolls Three Blood Moon, and uh, Blood Moon. I did not play, but it was another expansion, and it came in the Game of the Year edition for Xbox, uh, which released in, like, June of 2003, I think, uh, or maybe a little bit later than that. Um, but I did not play the expansion of that. Then they had Elder Scrolls Travels uh, Stormhold, which do not know what this game is. Uh, it came out on smartphones. Um, I have no clue. I've never even heard of this title before. It's totally new, new to me. It was a Java enabled cell phone game. Um, <laughs> what? I can't see your face right now, Skelly, but I'm just expecting you to like, oh, dude. Oh. I know. What was this um, available on Palm Trio? It was actually available on nokia's engage uh oh the <laughs> engage oh the, oh see but what's crazy is oh that my geez. i think a lot of these companies like i know this is off topic but i think a lot of these companies they made these games uh for the engage um just because they were like some deal that they struggled dumb. with <laughs> the damn nokia uh, engage are you serious it's horrible man it's horrible um, then in 2004, they came out with two more travels, the Dark Star and Shadow Key, uh, and uh, it was for mobile platforms as well. Uh, it stretched from 2003 to 2006. Uh, so, getting down into, they passed over 2005, 2006, Elder Scrolls Oblivion came out, and it was just fantastic, dude. Like, it was, it was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, it was a true... RPG first person experience like something I had never played before uh, wow. and it really really changed my my outlook on games and obviously with Oblivion came uh, Knights of the Nine and Shivering Isles uh, Shivering Isles came out in 2007 so then there was another three year span 2008, 2009, 2010 that there was no Elder Scrolls and people were crying left and right saying they wanted another one and then 2011 hit and bam they dropped the freaking mic with Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, and it was huge. Like, I remember this game, like, I remember the first time they showed this trailer off at E3, I think it was E3 2009 or 2010, um, and uh, it blew my mind, man. Like, it was it was everything I had ever wanted in an Elder Scrolls title, uh, and is still, to this day, one of the best role-playing first-person style games on the market you could go out you could play it now you can download it on pc with tons of mods to make it look amazing uh, in 2012 they released dawn guard hearth fire and dragonborn which were all dlc for the game uh and then in 2014 something different released the elder scrolls online now me and the wife actually got to play this title at quakecon 2013 we got to play it for two hours. It was fantastic. And then whenever it released for PC, there was a lot of things changed with it that people did not like. Uh, the uh, you know the 
the quest modes with your player or with different friends. There was a lot of times that uh, that you could not actually quest up with people um, and actually get into parties with people without it messing you up or you being on different missions. Uh, and now it's released for console, and since it's released for console, it's a way, way better game. Now, I am a fan of the title, but I am not the biggest fan of the title. Uh, I do like it. Um, it. It is an Elder Scrolls game, but I it's hard to play Elder Scrolls online when you played Skyrim. Because Skyrim, to me, is like, you know, is like World of Warcraft to you, Skelly. Uh, you know, it was... A game changer huge game changer so um, it was hard to go to such a different pace um, from what they from from what Skyrim had to to Elder Scrolls Online to more of an MMO style title that I'm not really used to playing you know um, so and then at E3 this year they actually announced Elder Scrolls Legends which is a collectible card video game um, it will be coming out in quarter three, quarter four, 2015 for iOS, Microsoft Windows, uh, and then eventually for Android. And uh, I guess the reason why they're coming out with this is to take on Hearthstone, and that's going to be a pretty daunting task uh, to do. So that is the timeline release. They might, they might as well just call it friggin' Hearthstone, the Blizzard, or the Bethesda expansion. <laughs> that sounds good to me, dude. Uh, how about Blizzard and Bethesda work together and make a love child? No, because Blizzard likes to make good games. Uh, dude, you're going to start some shit in a second, bro. Uh, <laughs> all right, Tom so play more. <laughs> what we can get down into next is, um, I guess, the overall story, maybe? And, and it's hard to do that. It's hard to... I don't think that we need to really pick out like our favorite moments uh, or like this or this. Like I want to just mainly talk about like the what you felt when you played those titles. Like how did the story leave you afterwards? Was there times that you played Elder Scrolls games? And I know there was, or I'm sorry, World of Warcraft games, uh, even Warcraft games. And I know there was. Were there times that you were left uh, very disappointed? Um, with the with the with the actual storytelling or even the quest modes in the game, um, there was. Um, looking back at it now, as far as Warcraft goes, the only time I was seriously disappointed was when they released Mists of Pandaria over the fact that and they've done it a few times now um fans have been waiting for like a like what's the word i'm looking for an expansion um for the emerald dream for the longest time um in the original warcraft there was a zone and this was when they originally alpha mined the or mined the um the alpha and beta um there was a zone for the emerald dream that they never did anything with they removed it they didn't release anything they didn't build upon it and right around the time that mr pandaria was coming out a lot of fans were anticipating finally um seeing the emerald dream but blizzard went a different route and released mr pandaria um which in a lot of fans eyes was a laughing stock of the series for the fact that um you know, to, you know, Toaster from um, 16-Bit Assassins and also our show once in a while. Um, always makes fun of the Pokemon battles and stuff like that. They release um, pandas and Pokemon battles. Um, so that was really the only point that... What do you mean? What do you mean whenever you say pandas and Pokemon battles? Um, they release a playable race called the pandas, which, you know, is some race of pandas on the back of a turtle floating through the ocean on an on this no, no no i know the i know the panda race but you're talking about like pokemon battles oh like, like they have um pets in the game that you can collect we for the longest time they were just little pets you could collect that you could have follow you around um some of them were like limited edition shows that you like achieved something 
or that you were in the game at a certain point of time, or you went to BlizzCon. Um, yeah. And they all just followed you around. They were just ways to, you know, a, a cosmetic thing, you know, just to have a yeah. little bit of fun with, to show yeah. off your personal um, style. Yeah, a little companion. And right. everybody would have different ones. Right. Or some people would have the same. There's sort of. hundreds upon hundreds in the game. And, you know, you would walk up to somebody, see one that you didn't have, and you'd be like, oh, how'd you get that? Stuff like that. Um, but in... Mr. of Pandaria, they released a pet battle system, which was similar <laughs> to Pokemon. Mm. And a lot of people don't know why they did that. But why did you do this? <laughs> yeah, I still, like, I've done some of the pet battles only because in the new expansion, um, there's a, like, a little pet area of your garrison that you need to have, like, level 25 pets to get achievements to, you know, it just level that part of your garrison. That's the only reason I've ever done them. I have a couple hundred pets that I collected throughout the years only for, you know, the purposes of making gold. Because you can sell some of them on the auction house and make gold. But that was really the only point in World of Warcraft or the Warcraft series that I felt severely disappointed in Blizzard as a yeah. whole um, with what they did there. But once they started releasing, you know, the scenarios and challenge mode heroics and all that stuff and then um, siege of orgrimmar and mists it turned me around a little bit the raiding system was really good um i had fun with some of the raids but when they announced mists of pandaria and um toaster was over here we were watching it live on um direct the direct tv feed yeah. and we were just both like what are you fucking f serious <laughs> really come on and we just like laughed that's all now we could were do you were you a little upset too whenever Warlords of Draenor first released? No, um, was it like I was, the alpha? When I uh, uh, with Warlords of Draenor, I was at BlizzCon the day they announced it, um, and it was phenomenal to me. I loved it from the point they announced it, um, only because they at the end of Mr. Pandaria, I liked the twist and this, um, and I'm not going to do any spoilers, like the who became the new Horde's war chief. Um, and I wanted to see where that went. They didn't really expand on it too, too much, but um, Garrosh Hellscream, um, at the end of Mists of Pandaria, he's no more. He's not the war chief anymore. Everyone knows that. But when you go into um, Warlords of Draenor, the story and everything that goes along with it, it goes back in time to where Warcraft originated. Um, Draenor was inhabited and you know th oh by... yeah it was like an alternate timeline right not really an yeah. alternate timeline but it was like a throwback but yeah you have garrosh hellscream there and everything but garrosh hellscream's dad's there yeah and it's i loved what they did with it making it more of a you know immersive experience um they basically just like they tried to do with cataclysm where they you know revamped the whole world um, made it to where, you know, they didn't introduce any new zones in Cataclysm, but they revamped everything. 3,500 plus new quests, changed the layout of the land. So if you had leveled those areas before, they were going to be completely different. Um, with Draenor, they tried to reinvent the game, but in a different way. Um, I like that they finally started doing character model upgrades, um, updating graphics, um, basically redoing a lot of that stuff. And the story to me is starting to get so much more in depth. Yeah. Um, and now with Garrison, with the latest patch 6.2, um, and I haven't played it yet. I'm just going to be starting it after I finish um, Batman. So I got 100% that first. Fury, Fury of Hellfire or whatever? Yeah, um, I'm going to get back in because Garrison's, they reinvented um, a little bit. They added to it. They tweaked it. Um, different garrison missions. They also made a um, docks now, so you have boats in your. It's an, an aquatic aspect to the in a marine. A, excuse me, marine aspect to <laughs> your garrisons now. So yeah. I'm gonna get back into that once I finish on Batman, and I'll definitely be streaming it so you guys can check it out. But I with Warlords of Draenor right now, um, I am back into WoW like I was with vanilla. Well, see, and like I remember, you were talking about World War II Drain or how excited you were, and I remember they said in the in the plot it was it takes place in like an alternative universe, 
uh, on the world of Draenor to where, you know, there's there's a little bit of a different storyline with this one from what the original storyline was with the Horde. Um, right, yeah, because this is from where the um, where the Dark Horde came from. Yeah, and... like instead of them accepting, um, oh, what was it, man? I actually watched a video the other day of the guy explaining it. Instead of them accepting like some blood pack or something like that, like yeah. they, they they started a, a full alliance horde. Right. Um, and uh, I remember whenever they they released the trailer for Warlords of Draenor, I was like, holy shit. Like, that's one big thing about Blizzard, too. Like, they do amazing cinematic trailers, man. Like, oh. good yeah, God. It's just, they get you so involved. And this is another reason I cannot wait for the movie. I know, right? Oh. I'm actually really excited about the movie. Um, Storyline-wise, with Elder Scrolls, uh, I will say Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim all won Game of the Year awards from multiple outlets whenever they released. The series has sold way more than 40 million copies worldwide. Uh, Skyrim itself uh, has sold um, has sold, I think, 30 million on Steam, 20 million on console, um, and and Skyrim was like huge, dude. Like Skyrim changed the 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 layout of what first person R- RPG style game should be. Uh, whenever Skyrim released, it was more than just like, oh, okay, well, this is just another telling of, you know, of the Elder Scrolls series. It was set 200 years after the events of Oblivion, uh, and you started out, like always, in the, you know, as a prisoner, going to your death, dragons are back, and come to find out, you're a freaking dragonborn, which is human with the soul of a dragon. And, uh... It's so freaking crazy. I Can mean, there's so much to do. What? Can you turn into a dragon? No, I wish you could. That'd be awesome. I'm sure there's a mod out there that you can do that oh, with on PC, though. Not, not cool. Not there's cool. tons of tons of mods you can play with Macho, or you can have dragons look like Macho Man Randy Savage, too. So. Why, do what? Are you being serious right now? You've never seen that? No. We'll have to, we'll have to, I'll have to show you this, I'll show it to you oh, after this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's what happens. Like, when. Do they fly around with Slim Jims? Yeah, when they have the when they have the mod on, you're you're going down to get your head chopped off, and instead of Alduin flying and and hitting it, like Alduin comes flying in and he's doing dragon noises and everyone's turning and they're like, "What was that? And, Nothing. Get back! Come on, let's let's get this done." But instead, with the mod on and they're they're being dragon noises, they get up and you hear, Ooh, "The what two men's coming for you?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "What was that?" Nothing. Get back to the execution, and then you hear. Never do a slim jam. Yeah. And then they try and say it again, and then it flies down, and it's Macho Man Randy Savage like stretched out like a dragon. He's like, and he like shoots his dragon speech out. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Like the Skyrim modding community is nuts. Like some of the stuff that they do, it adds on stories. Like there is, I and I. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, dude, this guy calls himself an Elder Scrolls fan. He doesn't even know the the exact aspects of it. But there was one guy that made a a, a DLC for Skyrim uh, and uh, did it by himself. It was a full mod. It added over 30 hours of gameplay. Um, and I think it had 30 voice actors as well. And the dude ended up landing a job, I think, at Riot. Um, and I may be wrong, so if I am wrong, please comment below and let me know, because I probably am. Um, but he actually landed, landed a, game, uh, a job as a game developer for what he did. And uh, and it's just awesome. There's so much of a big backing of modding with, with Bethesda products. Um, but like I said, back to what I was talking about with Skyrim, it really drew me into, like, I mean, that was that was one game that I think I put, like, almost 200 hours into into the game. And, and a lot of it wasn't full-on story mode because I don't think there was full a, a, a total of 200 hours of story. It was mainly walking around and looking at the environment. And being and that's stupid something... in game. Do what? And being stupid in game. Like me, the uh, first thing I did was kill the chicken and the whole world wanted to kill Oh, me. my God. It was crazy, man. Oh, that walk was the in. Worst. Yeah, I hey, walked chicken. in. I just, saw a Motherfucker. <laughs> I just wanted a 12-piece. These motherfuckers wanted to kill That's me. the reason why Skelly hated Skyrim. Yeah. Kill the chicken. 
and he was attacked by the entire town. So. I just wanted the extra crispy. Yeah. With some mac shit, and cheese, yeah. and these Thunder motherfuckers wanted to kill me. Um, but and that's something we can get into now. And like, and I don't really have to explain like how awesome of a storyline Elder Scrolls has. I think everyone knows that that all the all the guys over at Bethesda do such an ama- uh, amazing job. You know, especially whenever you have a, dir- a lead director of Todd Howard um, directing the team and making it really just push into like this this full on immersive experience and that's what it was, you know, and it's the same way with that Skelly feels about wow. Like when he plays it in a religious manner, it is a full on immersive experience. And sometimes I have no fucking clue what he's talking about at all. Like <laughs> none. I listen to him and Jen and Jeremy in the past and like them talking about wow and I'm like I even like downloaded WoW and tried to play it and I couldn't, you know, I just I couldn't get into it. So and I think it's all cut, cuts down to preference, but that's what we can get into next. Like now, re- actually, know, real quick before we do, okay. was, has there been any point, like you asked me, um, where you've actually been disappointed? Well, other than Elder Scrolls Online as a whole, because we all know that's garbage. Um, no, it's not except, garbage. Except on console, console it reinvented itself and became yeah. a good game. Because you but, actually like it. Shut up. No, don't. Act, yeah, um, don't. You told me that before. Anyways, yeah. but is there been uh, any point um, in the series or in the um, franchise in, as a whole that you've been disappointed? Uh, the times that I was disappointed, um, I think the biggest time that I was disappointed was uh, when I played um, Oblivion. Uh, there was Oblivion was good, and like I said earlier, like it changed. Like at that time, it, you know, it was two thousand two, and um, when Oblivion, when I played Oblivion, it was something really different. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, I said 2002. Um, yeah. When Oblivion came out, it was in 2006. Uh, it was right after I graduated from high school, and uh, you know, I was a, I was a pretty big gamer. You know, I was I gamed as much as I could at that time. You know, I lived in a real small town. Uh, you know, I couldn't. You know, I didn't have like the best internet connection. But then in 2000, I think it was in 2000, late 2006, I moved to, to Sulphur Springs, uh, which is close by Dallas. And, like, that's whenever I got real big online, started doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, it, it was just, like, it it was crazy, dude. Like, it, it was really good. I really loved the game. But at the same time, like, there was so many bad glitches with it. Um, there was so many, uh, and I know people out there that are Elder Scrolls fans are going to hate me saying this, but the voiceovers, I hated the voiceovers. Um, it was a really good game. I mean, they put so much into the game, uh, but I feel that Oblivion and Morrowind are, are two completely different experiences. Uh, Morrowind, yeah, like it, obviously Oblivion is a huge step from what Morrowind was. Uh, but at the same time, when Oblivion came out, I guess that the biggest thing that that upset me was a lot of the problems that, that I had. And I was playing it on Xbox 360 at the time. Um, I don't think that was one of the big problems. But Oblivion, I think out of all the series, Oblivion was one of my most disappointing like moments. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was really good, but at the same time, I think it could have been a lot better. Yeah. You know? I, I totally uh, agree. Um, Oblivion to me was a little slow. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really get into it too much. I tried it, and, just and I, I, I feel that it was also a little rushed, too. You know, um, I mean, yeah, they wanted see... to rush it out for the launch of um, the 360. That's why. Wasn't yeah, that and you can see titles? like here, like you know, 1998 to 2002. There's a full three year span before they come out with a game, and you can see the difference between Red Guard and Morrowind. Then, um, 2007 to 2011, uh, al- almost um, almost four years. Uh, you know, they had a full three-year span that there was no games um, being pushed out at that time. There was a full three-year span, and obviously, like, right after Shivering Isles launched, they were already working on uh, Skyrim, but it's still, like, you know... 
with with Elder Scrolls Oblivion, yeah, they were probably working on it for a little bit. You know, they were working on it probably the same amount of time uh, with with um, because Travels was out then, and it was just a mobile title. So there was somewhat of a three year span, but I, I still think that it it there there's a lot of things with that title that could have been done better. Uh, the voice acting, and I know a lot of people think that the voice acting was good, but uh, having former experience in that and like listening to the comparisons of, of voice actors, and to, and I'm going to tip my hat to, to WoW right now, Skelly. Um, comparing voice actors with, with uh, Oblivion uh, to a title that came out uh, with the Warcraft uh, genre and just a year later um, World of War, or even World of Warcraft in 2004 compare those voice actors to a title that came out in 2006 um, and it's completely different you know uh, it's completely different and I think there's the biggest problem with Oblivion is that they use a lot of the same voices they use a lot of the same models uh, and it didn't have that huge immersive experience that like you see in, in Skyrim or Elder Scrolls Online, or even World of Warcraft. Um, so that was that was mine. I know I, I dragged that out a little bit too. No, long, that's fine. So. Um, doesn't matter what, what do you want to talk about it, next? Man? It doesn't matter how long you draw, draw it out. We all know um, uh, World of Warcraft is above and beyond what yeah. Elder Scrolls is. And the numbers don't lie. The numbers do not lie when it comes to... Yeah, let's talk about, which let's is, talk about which the numbers. Is a, exactly, which is a bigger john which is a bigger franchise in general um even as of today um there's over seven well right hovering right around seven million subscribers in world of warcraft there's not even a million in elder scrolls online there's not but but at the same time world of warcraft has been out since 2004 but it doesn't elder matter. scrolls online has been out since last year it does not well it, when, dude Dude, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Skelly, are you crazy, bro? No, because uh, it, look at this. It's been you know it, it's fluctuated from nineteen ninety or from two thousand and five. We're, we'll go back to 05, first quarter of 05, which is the first you know real test of what they did quarter to quarter um, over the last ten years. And even the beginning of 05 was one point five million. That's in less than one year of I that's know. that's th like within the first six months of launch. Okay. You're already at well, one point five million subscribers. I I agree with you. I you're agree in you. the so first what? you're in the first year of Elder Scrolls online and you can't what? even hit a million. The uh wrong the first year that it was out in PC, which it came out a year before the console version, it was at one point two million. There but was where's a bunch that of now? problems with the game at the time, and it dropped to seven hundred seventy-two thousand subscribers. And now that was that. Um, that status there, was, there was a lot is, of there was a lot of issues in World of Warcraft that launched too, because Blizzard only um, anticipated four hundred thousand subscribers, and they had well over one point five million. And so I agree there was, with you, dude. I, I'm not there. saying I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that WoW, uh, Warcraft, whatever. I'm and, not and saying it, that it they don't deserve it because they do. And I only, and I understand you're saying it's been out for two year for ten years, but you got to realize a game's been out for ten years and still has seven point one million subscribers. Yeah, but look, you're not looking at it in in a logistical standpoint. ESO is the first online title that Bethesda and Zenimax have ever tried it's the first title that they have ever came out and said you know i remember me and toaster talking about it on the podcast saying i, I would love to play skyrim in a co-op mode i, I would I, love I to play. understand that you know it's the first iteration but at this point in the game at this point in you know gaming in general you have a lot to look back on and to learn from you do, you do. I agree with you 100. percent But like now the, they're making they're making up for it with constant because, updates oh, with new they're content. They're not making up for it. Look at the launch of Elder Scrolls Online for console. It took me three days to log in one time. 
Okay. Okay. That is not doing a lot of work to make Dude, sure that on, something's man. up to par. That that's like that's like me saying that's like me saying if if WoW were to take down their servers for a couple of days to do internal testing, they, they take down else. their servers every freaking Wednesday. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Why should they ever have to take down their servers? That's a ridiculous argument. No, to even they say. take down the servers it was to make the reason sure. Why, the reason why there was so much problems and so much fluctuation whenever the console version first launched, and there was a ton of people that were trying to play the game. And yes, I do agree. They should be ready for that type of, of heat on their servers. They totally should be. But now, with the constant quest and updates that they're trying to do to the game, since Dara has been playing it, since I've played it in just the past like week or so or whatever, I haven't had any drops. I've had no lag connection uh, or no bad connection at all. Uh, uh, so you can't say no lag because you're playing on PlayStation. But um, dude, I'm gonna <laughs> uppercut your ass through this fucking screen, man. No, but all I, I'm saying is, dude, you're looking at it from a standpoint of a World of Warcraft fan. No, I'm looking you at it a, as a standpoint of a consumer in you know gaming. And not God, buying dude. into this bullshit of, you know, I'm not oh, buying the game into any just bullshit. launched, well, so you know there's going to be issues. No, what I'm saying is that, yeah, their subscription is not as good as World of Warcraft subscription was whenever it first launched. We dude, can say totally. that total okay. 100%. Okay, let, let, let's do this. But at, how, how, how many, okay, let's go back to, in time, to right around when... Let's say 2007, the Burning Crusade. That was right around the time the um, – wasn't that right around the time the Shivering Isles came out for yes. the um, Oblivion expansion um, on 360? Mm -hmm. um, how many copies did that sell? What, Shivering Isles? Yes. I'll have to look it up. Because um, the Burning Crusade came out that same year and in 24 hours sold 2.4 million copies copies in 24 hours these games have been around at that point both series for the same amount of time for 13 years <laughs> and i'm not talking about just subscriber base there because around that time there was 13 million subscribers in world of warcraft so just the burning crusade in general 2.4 million copies in one day which at that point set a record for highest um fastest selling game in PC history I'm trying to look it up I can't find it so what are we looking at the Shivering Isles Shivering Isles overall the Shivering Isles is the largest official expansion pack for the role playing game the Elder Scrolls on or the Elder Scrolls Oblivion I said online um, but this is what I'm saying you know I don't know how to explain it, dude. I like I told you before, I'm not saying that yeah, uh, I'm not saying that WoW uh, or even Warcraft is a is a worse game than Elder Scrolls. Or I, I'm not saying that Elder Scrolls is a better game than WoW, but I think you need to at least give it a little bit of respect because like you hate on Elder Scrolls. I give it a so little respect. Much. I give it a little bit of respect. I mean, you know. You say it's the, named I, nicely. That's it. Like, that's the only respect that you give it. Like, Elder Scrolls. You know, like, you I, don't come I, up I, with, like, some... I gotta hmm. give it some respect. It's not fucking Hitler. Hmm. So, uh, there's some respect there. Yeah. I mean, it's not the worst thing that could have ever happened in the world. But it's borderline. No, but I mean, to me, I... I and we had this discussion right after E3... I don't like companies, you know, yes, you do have other companies to learn from. You do take little pieces of this game, little pieces of that game, or an aspect of what this company's doing right and something from this company that's doing something right. But you don't blatantly go out and do the exact same thing to a T. Dude, oh my God. That another company's doing. Here we go, dude. Uh, we're gonna get. Here we it. go. Let's <laughs> talk about that. Like that's that's yes. something that we need to talk about in the face off. Right. That like that. This let's is, talk about it. that. This because, happened the other day because we're I, we're no. gonna bring this up because me and Skelly were were uh, doing E uh, three coverage, and Skelly brought up the fact during Bethesda's press conference. Of course, 
Look at them. Look what they're doing. They're going to bring out the same exact shit that Blizzard has brought out. Like, this hasn't happened in the games industry 24,000 times. Out, come out with come out with something it. different. Come out with a different name for Dude, it. Try to approach man. it differently. Like, okay, let's look at... Let's, let's, okay, let's, B- Battle Battle.net. Battle.net's been around since, what, 1996, yeah. 1997? Um, Bethesda.net, are you Bro, f- bro, no, 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 me. don't even talk shit about Bethesda.net because you said, even in our E3, like, video or podcast, you said, man, it's going to be huge. It's going to be fantastic. We when didn't do a podcast after dude. E3. Oh, yes, yeah, we, we did. did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Bro. Well, I th- and I'm not saying it's not going to be good because we all know that's good. But Battle it doesn't good. mean that they're copying it. They're looking at it and saying, hey, this is a really Dang good on. idea. I think that we can actually imp- implement their idea. That doesn't mean they're saying, hey, we're going to steal their idea. So let's make a card-based game. You got to think, dude. Like, they're looking at it in a logistical standpoint of saying, we have really – we have a huge – Huge storyline to go with with but the see, Elder Scrolls series. The, re- the reason Overall. Blizzard, the reason Blizzard had Hearthstone, was because they tried the physical copy and the card game. So yeah. they transitioned into a digital copy of the card game into Hearthstone. Discontinue the card game. Okay. What the fuck did Elder Scrolls do? Just said Elder oh. Scrolls didn't do anything. Elder Scrolls saw these saw the oh. success. Of Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Yes. And, and now this and is just my to, opinion. To, to I don't bite, know. I don't know exactly what they hang on real quick. I don't know exactly what they did. I don't know who sat down and came up with the idea. I, I'm not at their office to figure out exactly what they did. But at the same time, they're looking at it and saying, Hey, we have a really expansive story, just like wow. Our games have 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 stretched out for twenty years as well, just like wow. Now, to say that our games have sold as much as well? No, of course not. Because it's not even cutting down to the okay. comparison of sales. It's cutting down to the comparison of these two companies are completely different companies let's, let, that are somewhat in the same genre of story. Let's let's okay? let's let's try this for a second. Both companies started well. They both Bethesda started years early in what, like 1986. Um, Blizzard's been around since around the same time. But uh, Bethesda. Yeah, it's been, it was like 86, 89, oh, somewhere right around there. So, but, um, yeah. I mean, both franchises started at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, Blizzard started off as a company that lived game to game. If they if Warcraft didn't do anything, they were out of business. Yeah. So they started off there, progressed, progressed, you know, reinvented things, brought us freaking Battle.net, you know, brought out Warcraft, th- or, yeah, Warcraft 3, um, started a community of like an esports community around Warcraft Three. Um, then they, you know, reinvent themselves. They're like, okay, we have a story based on this game. Let's try our hand at you know an MMO. So they reinvented that game and made it an MMO. Yeah. For ten year, ten plus years now, it's been an amazing game. They it has been. they decide to twist that into you know. Let's you know make a casual style game, Hearthstone, and let's go from there. Okay, they did, which they did now, an amazing job. And now, I now, love let, now, let, now let's venture off into Bethesda. Now you know they have the Elder Scrolls series. It's one style game. Normal. It's basically you know an RPG style game, single player. You know you do what you do what you got to do by yourself. Have fun. After all these years, they reinvent themselves and say hey let's try your hand at mmo and see if we can compete with wow now see and that wasn't just bethesda it was zenimax online as well right and i and and just and i don't think they looked at it and say let's see if we can can compete with WoW." every i think a lot i think a lot of the things that they did with this title with eso was because they consistently saw their fan base saying we would love to see an online aspect of some of these, you know, the Elder Scrolls series of Oblivion and Skyrim, how good the games were. So they wanted to bring out their own version so their 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 fans can enjoy that style of experience with their friends. Now to say that the Elder Scrolls Online is the best game ever, I would be lying. And I have much love for Zenimax, much love for Bethesda. I don't think it's the best game to ever come out but any company that tries to get into the mmo genre 
knows damn well they're getting into it having to compete with WoW. I totally so understand they have that. It in I their agree. Head. Yeah. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Yeah. But, but see, and this is what I keep bringing but, up, but, but, and what, I know what, I know that you say that I'm wrong in this aspect, or you don't look at it the same way I do, but it's literally the first like life cycle of the game. Like They haven't even had time to expand the game. They haven't had time to add any expansion. They've already released expansion. Which, Which one? Hammer Rolls, whatever. No, Tamriel Unlimited Collection is just, they just changed the name. What I'm saying that is, added what, stuff. what's aggravating. That added stuff, it's a freaking expansion. No, they didn't add anything, dude. They added, look, like, costume packs but that like you I, could buy in the crown store. What I'm saying is, it's aggravating because I consistently hear people shit and trash talk Elder Scrolls Online. Like I said, I'm a huge Skyrim fan, so it's hard to hard to compare both of the games because they're, they, they're in the same genre, but I do feel there's a lot of differences between them. But to say that it's a complete shit game whenever it's only been out for a year, it's an MMO. It's a consistently growing space. Hold on. Yeah, they've had some fucking bumps. They've okay. had a lot of bumps. They've had a lot of rough roads this, this year or so that they've been out. But people have got to give them more of a chance because... We all know Blizzard has had their times of falling and failing at things. They have. And oh, yeah, different... Mr. Pandaria. Yeah, that's it. That's the only this, one. Uh, no, there's many things. Before they got into the whole PC genre, they did a lot of things in, in console as well. Okay? And we're we're not talking about the companies. Now we're talking about these games. Right. And okay? that's, So, wow. Yeah, it's been awesome. But there have been times that servers have dropped and this and that. Whenever the games first launched, there was a lot of there was a lot of things going for the games. There was tons of people, you know, crashing the servers, all kinds of shit. But crashing what I'm the saying servers, is, there wasn't fucking enough servers. Okay, but the, what did you say? There wasn't enough servers. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is that there's there's always times that. There's going to be down times. There's going to be bad times and good times. But people have got to give them more of a chance. Instead of saying, oh, the game's been out of year. You know, they should have fucking, they should have hit this fucking home run out of the park. You know, it's an MMO. It's a, it's a massive multiplayer online experience that grows constantly. Okay. I, I'm getting, over and I, over I, and over again. You, we, did, we have been talking about servers, and this is yeah. just public service announcement PSA to every company out there <laughs> you have a million pre-orders of a game expect two million to be there on launch day yeah I agree with that don't be stupid totally agree with that dude I totally agree with that if you have a, a shit ton of, of pre-orders uh, and you know that there's going to be a ton of shit make sure your servers are up yeah. set up your you server if you have a like I said a million pre-orders have your servers set up to handle be able to handle two million then yeah. you don't have to worry about it yeah, I agree with that, dude. Totally. But what I'm saying is, you know, it it's just aggravating whenever I consistently hear people shit on the Elder Scrolls Online. And a lot of the people that are shitting on this game have never even played the game. Ever. Ever. Oh, they I never know. even tried to play the game. They but didn't see, play the beta. See, and I know we're not talking about companies, but when it comes to... Both two MMOs that we're talking about, Elder Scrolls and World of Warcraft. Um, you have a company like Blizzard that, when Warlords of Dragon came out, there was a few server issues. There was um, a lot going on um, because they spiked in users at that time because of the um, auto boost to ninety. Um, Blizzard came out and said, "Yeah, we fucked up." So they added game time to people. Um, they gave a few little things out um, to accommodate people. You know, say, you know what? We know you're paying for a game. We screwed up. Our bad. Yeah. Elder Scrolls, I couldn't log in for three days. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, we're sorry. You can't play. Eat a dick. You know, sit there longer. They didn't oh, do silly. anything. Mm. It was... they. They didn't come out the way. I, I don't look at it like they didn't do anything. I don't look at it like they were like, huh, well, you you should have known you were going to have to wait. I don't look at it like that. I don't think any company they, out there, there I think there acts was, like I that think there was one all. tweet out there or one something out there that I remember no, there was, seeing. There was multiple tweets out by Zenimax and Bethesda Software 
or Bethesda Game Studio. That basically whatever. said, oh, our bad. We didn't expect as many people at launch. No, it didn't basically say that. It said well, we're having a lot of you know traffic, heavy traffic on the servers. That, we're that, doing what heavy we can. traffic, heavy traffic is we didn't expect this. We yeah, they probably get didn't. We didn't I mean, get ready think for about this. It. Think about it. There was alphas and beta tests. There was tons of people that were saying that the game was down. Like I said, I played the game for two years. Uh, two two years. I played the game for two hours at at uh, QuakeCon 2013, and it was a fucking awesome experience that I had. In the first week of Elder Scrolls Online launching uh, on console, it sold over a hundred thousand copies on PlayStation Four in just the UK. Ooh. And that's and that's a oh come on, dude. Like <laughs> I said, look, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. We should give a free pass, like doing the doing the first ever face off. I'm not saying that we should give a free pass and just say, okay, look, we all know that World of Warcraft or the Warcraft genre is better than Elder Scrolls because I don't think so. I think it's two different styles of of full on RPGs. I think it's two completely different styles of RPGs. But the, the thing I don't like is, um, and with the Elder Scrolls series, and one thing I don't get about their they're diehard fans uh -huh. um, with, and I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this, but I think you might um, with Blizzard and the way they did Warcraft one, two and three, mm -hmm. they released expansions. They expanded the story, a story that you could actually follow and understand. There was novels you could read. Um, but when they went into the, um, MMO genre and they reinvented it they reinvented something that they knew their fan bases would get into and love yeah. and enjoy when they launched it they built the hype they you know announced it at what ECTS um, or ETCS or ESC whatever in two, yeah. um, 2001 they announced the first trailer um, they built the hype over three years um, they tailor to their fans with the game. So their fans, they knew they had millions upon millions of fans playing Warcraft 2 and 3. Um, so they did something in War, World of Warcraft that made those fans want to buy it, made those fans want to play it, which showed right there that their fan base was willing to embark on this adventure with them embark on this new uh, thing that they wanted to try even if it failed their fans were there yeah and that just shows the heart that you know blizzard fans have for warcraft or warcraft fans have for the franchise that i don't think elder scrolls diehard fans have because totally disagree no with because when Warcraft, like I, and this is um, like I said with subscriber numbers earlier, first six months of the game, 1.5 million um, subscribers. Oh. When even if it failed, they still had that many people adopting the game and everything. There was bugs and issues at the beginning of Warcraft. There definitely was. But the fans stayed. The fans kept subscribing, kept paying that monthly fee, kept getting their friends playing it because I would be playing Warcraft if there, if it wasn't for this kid in my barracks when I was in the Coast Guard that bought it for me. And they told their friends about it, got their friends hype about the game. And then they bought into it. They made it what it is today. With okay. Elder Scrolls fans, it didn't seem like they bought into what Bethesda was doing with Elder Scrolls Online, which they... Played it for a little while, and they just gave. Okay, up. well, you're comparing, you're comparing, you're comparing not just one game, you're comparing a shit ton of WoW games. No. To Elder Scrolls Online. Not at all. I'm comparing their fan bases that are okay, dying enough comparing... to want to stick with its title, regardless. Okay, but this is what I'm saying. We're comparing the Elder Scrolls Online. Or not the Elder Scrolls Online, I apologize. We're comparing the Elder Scrolls series right. to Warcraft. Right. And not just WoW and ESO. Right. We're comparing an entire series. Right. And Elder Scrolls as a whole around the series is the fan base that makes that series 
successful. And they've, they've always, 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 the fan base of Elder Scrolls has always backed the title. But the reason why the fan base was somewhat against the... Uh, was somewhat against the release of ESO is because it wasn't the title they expected. They expected, uh, you know, when you come off of such a a full on hype game, dude. When you come off, and and this is talking about a different title, uh, which was done by one of their third party companies or whatever at the time. It's like coming off of Fallout Three to New Vegas. Fallout New Vegas was brought out uh, with by Obsidian, and it was not Fallout Three. There were shit tons of bugs. It was not the, the game that people you know thought of when it when they thought about Fallout. They thought of Fallout Three when they thought about Fallout. So it's the same exact thing with Skyrim. When they played Skyrim, it was such a ground a groundbreaking uh, groundbreaking title in the entire series. Then you come out with Elder Scrolls Online. And it's not that it's not it's not that it's a bad game. It's the fact of it's not the game that the that the fans wanted. And, and I expect any fans out there of any genre, if a if a game comes out and it's not the game that they actually wanted, why would you think anybody to back that up? You know, it's going to take time to back it up. And Zenimax is is going to have a couple of years to to try and pull people back into the genre. That's the reason why they made it a free to play title. I think they're you too can far play gone. it free to play, I, or you can get the fifteen monthly subscription. I think they're too far gone. To they could be it. now. Look, dude, they could be. They could have screwed the pooch at the very beginning. By the way, that you know the PC launch was. Yeah, but at, but and at the same that's, time, that's what I mean. They didn't build the game tailored to what the fans wanted. Or okay. what the and I, I agree adopt. there was a lot of things that released that were not what fans wanted. But what I'm saying is, as a whole, as a total series, Elder Scrolls fans have always been behind the series, have always been behind Bethesda uh, from day until, one. Until Bethesda uh, changed okay, yes, until, until Bethesda Elder changed Scrolls it. Online. Right, but once they changed it, the fans didn't buy into it. No, I disagree the with fans you. Didn't dude. I totally disagree with you, dude. hundred percent. If, if, if they would have PC done... fans didn't, because we all know, and and nothing against anybody out there, we all know how PC fans are. We do. You are a PC fan. And PC I'm always right. Fans do what? And I'm always right. Yeah, <sighs> shut up. Uh, PC fans are very particular and very picky with their games. If a game launches on PC and it sucks, it's not just hey. This game's kind of broken. Things need to get fixed. Whatever. <laughs> Batman. It's a total fucking, yeah. It's a total fucking, like, I'm going to rip this computer in half fucking riot. And that's how it was with Elder Scrolls Online. It launched out, and, like, people, instead of saying, well, you know, this is what they need to work on, and I'm a little disappointed that the game launched in the, in the state it did, it launched, and it was like, this game sucks! It's the worst game I've ever played in my entire life. What the fuck? And it really wasn't that big of a big of, of an issue. That there was a few things they needed to fix. There was a few things that they thought were good ideas that fans didn't think were good ideas. Now to say that there are game breaking bugs and, and all this other shit, it's a farce. It, there was no game breaking bugs in the in the title at all. But there's still there was things that the fans did not like, and yes, they did not get behind it. But to say that that the the Elder Scrolls series fans don't back the series at all is it's completely wrong. It's a one hundred percent wrong. And I say this from someone that goes to QuakeCon every year. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Not the Bethesda big family, gone. do what? Not as big as BlizzCon, which came first. Yeah. Another ripoff. No, no, no. Another, hang on. When did BlizzCon ripoff. start, Skelly? Um, 2005. Okay, uh, QuakeCon started in 1995. Oh, shit, that's right. I always forget about that. I but always look, forget. Well, I'm it was saying. more of like a tournament type Yeah, thing it, was, it started out as a tournament, and now it's grown into something different. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. We both can agree... That you want to know what we both can agree on, and I just noticed it behind you, that Diablo is the shit. 
Diablo this guy. It's right behind me too. This guy. Um, okay, so we both can agree that both of these these series are great series. <laughs> we can. You know that we can. Okay. You don't like Skyrim for some fucking reason. I have no clue why. Uh, because you like first uh, person because they were. I didn't. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, ex- like this is your perfect chance to explain why you don't like Skyrim, which oh. is, which is, by the way, one of the highest selling console titles of all time. Twenty million copies on console, thirty million copies on Steam, and is still selling constantly with a huge modding community behind it. But go ahead. Uh, my issue with the game, and it started with um, Oblivion, was I. It's too slow, way too slow. Dude. I like I like you know getting in, doing a lot of stuff. You not having like, and this is one thing I am upset with as far as Elder Scrolls Online, with Warcraft. Um, you go and you start the game, or you go into an area. You're leveling. You pick up quests in an area. You do quests around that area. Help develop the story around that area. Then you know it. You pick up a quest, and it that quest moves you to the next area. More quests. You know it progresses the story that way. It makes it an easier experience to play for beginners. Mm-hmm. With Elder Scrolls Online. And even with like I with Skyrim, I guess. Now wait, it, hang on, hang on. I'm hours. sorry, dude. I gotta cut you off. We're not talking about that. But no, we're I, talking what, what about I'm saying Skyrim, that, right? And and it was the same with Skyrim. It felt like because I get out of a cave, and I yeah, didn't yeah. know where the hell to go. There, yeah, and so. I I mean, you had to, and I just don't like. Okay, let's just say this. It was not your style of game. It wasn't. Hey, that's the best way of saying it because it's the same way with me. There's a lot of people that think I'm crazy for not liking World of Warcraft. But it was was slow for me, too. Like, the combat system was slow. Um, And I just... I I played third person because the first person mode made me want to shoot myself in the foot. Why? That was one of the best things about it. No, it wasn't. Like, this. see, and this this is the reason why it's so great that Yumi did this face off. Because you and me are on two completely different pages when it comes on to the Elder Scrolls and and, World, uh, and Warcraft. Yeah. Like, I have tried with World of Warcraft, dude. I have tried, tried so hard to play that game. I can't. I can't get into it. I, To be honest, I don't see what the fucking big hype of the game is about. Like, yeah, okay, it's an MMO. And even in war, like I didn't play Warcraft, and I know it was completely it was RTS, but WoW is an MMO. That's totally understandable. I just don't like. I don't think the story is grasping enough to pull me in, and that's me. That's me. That's there's just been, me. There's, there's seven so, million other people out there that disagree with me. There are so oh. many things in World of Warcraft outside of the gameplay that makes it so amazing like that are memorable i mean like what dude over the 10 years there's been so many times in warcraft that have been some of the most memorable moments in gaming history like anyone out there that's watching that has played wow since you know the beginning can remember when um one of the, the infamous moment of when your server, when the gates of Ankaraj opened, when everyone on the server was there at the same time and made your server crash trying to, you know, watch that um, epic moment in game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, and that's that's awesome. That's or awesome. You, or when you were sitting For there. For a when... huge WoW MMO fan. Like that's 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 a thing that you and me don't see eye to eye on at all. They're like here, we're not seeing eye to eye. But see, I, I'm a, I'm more of a multiplayer gamer than a single player gamer. And you are. You and I, are. Think, like, I think that's I think that's why we're on different pages yeah, because I, I like I, the aspect of sitting in vent or sitting in um, Skype with a group of people, yeah. um, 
team speak, um, watching an epic moment or in a battle and like the first time you downed the Lich King and everyone in Vent is screaming because they're so happy. And then everyone crowds around the corpse and, you know, they take a screenshot and upload it to the team, the guild's website or upload it to Facebook or at the time MySpace. I mean, those moments that you lived with other people in game on, yeah. on top of the story. I mean, and that's a, for real. Dude, it's a huge thing. Huge. But in my aspect, I love play. I do love playing online. I love playing co-op with friends, but I'm more more or less the type of guy that, like Batman, like and I know this is completely out there. I love turning off all the fucking lights in the house, being here by myself, and putting on my seven point one PlayStation headset with a four K TV and playing Batman. That's a huge fucking experience for me because it is a single player immersive experience oh i get those moments too total, some dude games. total that's the reason why i was a huge fan of skyrim because i cannot tell you skelly i cannot tell you my friend my friend <laughs> and you remember dude like dude for real you remember when we went and we were at pax prime 2011 you me and quinn went to the bethesda booth we got to play, you played Rage, me and Quinn played uh, Skyrim, Skyrim, which I, I wish you could have played Skyrim. Oh, no, 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 no. Said, uh-uh. Rage was good, dude. No, Rage but, was garbage. No, no, no. Rage was, I think Rage was good graphically, but I think you would have had a better experience at the thing if you would have played Skyrim. No. But I remember you were like, I'm going to play Rage. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember me and Quinn, we started at the same, we started the same exact moments, okay? Like, the same exact spot. We were at level 100, I think. We were... No, we were at level 50. Um, We had... No, we were at level 100, and we had every item available. Like, we had shit tons of items. They were like, you have an... uh, You have... What did we play for an hour or two hours? Yeah, it was like forever and a day. Yeah. Like, do whatever you want to. We're like, holy shit. And literally, by the time we were getting up to leave, me and Quinn... We're in completely different spots, dude. Like, we started out, we were going the same exact way, and we were having completely different experiences. Completely different. And that's what just blew my mind about Skyrim. It was such a huge open world, dude. Like, I have gone from one side of the map to the other side of the map in walking. Just walking. No load screens at all. Like, And that was a huge thing at the time. Like, there was no load screens there was, I mean, there were load screens whenever you, when you traveled, when you fast traveled, but like going from one side of the map to the other, no load screens at all, dude, not one. And it like, it's blown my mind because that is the type of experience that I am getting when I play an Elder Scrolls game. Like, and that's the reason why I'm so excited. That hopefully they're going to come out with, you know, whatever they're going to come out with another Elder Scrolls title. Um, you know, in Fallout, that's coming out. It's going to be the biggest, most expansive first, like, you know, title that they've ever had, you know, and that's the reason why I've, I've always been such a big fan of Elder Scrolls is because the times that I've played it, I've had such an immersive experience. You know, I remember playing it whenever I was younger, playing Morrowind. I was like, you know, like, and and you may, you may have a different experience with games than I do, but whenever I was younger, I was not the guy that I am now. I wasn't this big, like you touch me, I'll break your fucking neck style guy. Like you, you know, I now. was I was a smaller, scrawnier dude. Like whenever I was in, shit, I think whenever I was in seventh grade, uh, in eighth grade, I weighed about a hundred pounds. Um, I was skinny. I was small. Uh, you know, so whenever I played video games, when I played video games, I did that to get away from the real world. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like when I played Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Elder Scrolls Morrowind, Skyrim, whatever, you know, I do that to forget everything else, to forget my stress, to forget everything. I want to immerse myself into a video game. And that's the reason why I love single player games, you know, but that's the reason why you also love multiplayer games. You love multiplayer games because it doesn't just bring you that immersive experience. It brings you the joy of being able to take down, like, like you said, like the Lich King. I remember launching a uh, world of Warcraft, uh, you know, three uh, Wrath of the Lich King at GameStop. I dude, there was more. There was 
if not the same, there was more people there uh, for the Lich King than there was for Call of Duty. Um, and, uh, like, it was a huge midnight release. There was tons of people talking about this shit, and I was remember I was over there laughing. I was like, <laughs> we're going to do our paladins and blah, 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 blah. Like, I was, like, over there well, laughing. Oh, yeah, like, dude. Like, legit. I have no fucking clue what they're talking about. But there was and, at that point, Lich, and at that point, Lich King broke Burning Crusade's record that day. 2.8 yeah. million copies in 24 hours. It's yeah. Warcraft. And this is, you know, one thing I will I still don't understand to this day. Every company that thinks they're going to come out with an MMO, it always ends up failing. But see, I because don't... they tried. They tried to venture too far off of what works. They do, they do. But that's the reason why I'm saying I feel people need to give Zenimax a little bit of a chance when it comes to this. Now, in like, dude, if like next year we still hadn't really seen that big of an improvement, then I'll agree with you. Then I'll say, yeah, we kind of screwed the pooch with this. You they know? did. Um, but at the same time, I'm giving it a chance. You know, so far what I've played, I've really enjoyed. Um, and even you said playing it on the console after the days of you trying to actually get online. Yeah. Uh, from what you have played, it's a pretty solid game on console compared to, a, to what it was when it first launched on PC. To a point, I still am finding it hard to and frustrating to um, do a quest in one side, one place and then have to go turn it in after another 20 minute walk to another place. <laughs> I don't. And like that's that. why you have your mount. I don't have a mount at level one. Do I have I? a mount at level one. Do I? Because I have the Imperial Edition. I did too. I said I was supposed to have a hey, mount. Well, then you should have one. How do I not have a mount? I'll, ta- I'll teach you how to get a mount Fuck later. Fuck you, Bethesda. <laughs> Shut up, Skelly. Fuck you. Anyways, fuck so, um, okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't. Well, do you have anything else you really want to touch on? Well, I, I want to wind it down and bring this all in to get your thoughts on what you want to see happen with the genre or the, the franchise in the future. What do you think the next step for the franchise is? Not like, Damn. not like 10, 20 years down the line. What do you want to see next? Um, you know what I would actually like to see next uh, with Elder Scrolls? Uh, I would like to see them. Uh, I would obviously I would like to see them go back to uh, the the single player aspect of it. Uh, now, this past uh, E3, there was a little bit of speculation here and there of saying that they were going to announce um, Elder Scrolls Six, uh, and uh, there's been. Tons of different stuff, you know. There's been rumors that Elder Scrolls Six is going to be the Elder Scrolls Argonians or whatever. It's going to be based on the Argonian race, um, which I particularly I don't think that I would enjoy that because <laughs> I'm I I don't like the Argonians. Would you uh, rather it, see them do that, or would you rather see them follow suit with a lot of other companies and come out with Skyrim Two? Oh. Man, dude. Do you think Shit. that would be, you know, too much of a kick in the face to gamers to not try to come out with something original, but just... Or... I don't know, because I don't think that it would be a kick in the face uh, to gamers. I think... Um, yeah, man, it's a hard thing to say. I think if they were to come out with the Skyrim 2, which, you know, uh, before E3, Ubisoft had put out a, a you know, like a, a survey... And Red Dead Redemption Two and the Elder Scrolls Skyrim or the Elder Scrolls Six Skyrim Two uh, was on or was actually on that list, right. uh, and that could have just been something that you know Ubisoft actually just did just to do it, you know. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think it would be a kick in the face because Skyrim was such a big Skyrim was such a big influence. But to be honest, I don't think. But that's what would make a Skyrim too, because there's tons of different uh, land masses outside of what they did with Elder Scrolls Online. You being able to go around, which Elder Scrolls Online is actually set a thousand years before Skyrim. Um, there's a lot of people that want to go to uh, Elsewire. They want to go to Black Marsh, um, you know. And one of the most beloved races on the game is the Khajiit, which is like the cat um, race, and uh, 
you know, I, I think I think it would be fantastic if they came out with like Elder Scrolls Six Black Marsh or whatever, and you know they did something different because there's like tons tons of land masses that that have never even been ex- uh, like actually explored um, outside of the lore that they've had with the title. So I would love to see like an Elder Scrolls Six kind of like a Black Marsh or you know uh, some type of and if they had a Skyrim too, I can't say that I would be mad about it because skyrim was such a good game uh i just don't expect them to come out with it um you know i think that i think that if they were to come out with elsewhere i think that it would have you know it would have a huge huge impact on on the felt uh, on the fan base and i'm probably saying that wrong i apologize um but uh I think if they come out with elder scroll 6 hopefully they won't come out with a skyrim 2 because like what you said I don't think it would be a kick in the fans' faces, but I think, you know, they've been at Skyrim. Like, you could literally, like, in the game, you could explore all of Skyrim. Um, so I think Elders, I think Elder Scrolls, when it comes out, it will be in a different landmass, and uh, hopefully um, there will be, you know, more customization and so on and so forth. So no. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Where would you like to see... Uh, World of Warcraft or just the Warcraft genre go from here? Would you like to see them go back to uh, maybe come out with an RTS title? Oh, that's what all the fans are hoping for. And I myself um, am hoping at BlizzCon this year um, they announce one more expansion for um, WoW. Um, That's a given. Um, It's been two years since this will be the second BlizzCon since they announced um, Warlords, which is right on pace to announce another one. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much guaranteed they're going to announce that this year. But I want to see them announce the highly anticipated Warcraft 4 um, and go back to its roots of the RTS style. Mm-hmm. and Because there are still a lot of fans out there like myself that play Warcraft 3. Religiously, yeah. there are still Warcraft 3 tournaments and everything like that. So um, I want to see him go back to that, but I do know they're going to stay with WoW a little bit longer. One, maybe two more expansions. So I, in all honesty, think we're about four or five years off from Warcraft 4, but that's what I want. Um, I want them to bring back the um, fan favorite, or not fan favorite because we never friggin' saw it, but the highly (laughs) anticipated um, Emerald Dream. I want them to do that finally. Give the fans what they've been anti- wanting for years um, yeah. and asking for. And it's been in the rumor mill so many times right be- before BlizzCon. They're like, oh, my God, they're going to announce the Emerald Dream finally. But I it just w- never happened. Right. Warcraft 3 I, is my f- final outcome. That's what I want. Um, and I think, you know, I actually think uh, – it's probably a little bit closer than what you what you expect, um, because with with the expansions uh, of any game, I think they have a certain you know team working on that. But I think Blizzard has uh, they probably have a separate section of their team or whatever. Do they have multiple studios? No, it's only Blizzard. Um, okay. But I do think, in all honesty, um, they're gonna they're not gonna release Warcraft Four while WoW still out. Um, because I believe they would want to finish the story of WoW before they bring out Warcraft 4. Because in historically, Blizzard likes to expand the story with each game in a series. Yeah. So they wouldn't introduce Warcraft 4 in the middle of World of Warcraft story. Yeah. They would, they would continue Warcraft's story from World of Warcraft into Warcraft 4. Yeah. And just change the genre and the feel of the game. Okay. Um, well, you know, like like we both said, uh, <laughs> I don't think there's a winner on this. Yep. No, there's not. Yep. No, there's not. Dude. Yep. No. Numbers never lie. I don't care about numbers, man. Sales numbers. Okay, let's never say lie. it like this. Single player experience, Elder Scrolls wins. Online, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Wow, Warcraft wins, plain and simple. Sales number uh, wise, Warcraft wins. Yeah, and sales, I mean, sales do speak for themselves. But like I said, um, 
<laughs> I know I probably didn't talk on a lot of things that a lot of you Elder Scrolls fans out there, you know, there's some of you guys out there that, like, I have so much respect for. You know, like, the, the nooks and the crannies. Uh, you know, my friend Zach, he knows a, a hell of a ton about just the Elder Scrolls uh, genre as a whole um, that I didn't even know. Um, and I've only been, you know, I've been around playing it on, on console more than anything. Uh, but I love my, I love my Elder Scrolls. Skelly loves his, uh, Warcraft. And, uh, that's pretty much it for this, this first edition of the Face Off. Uh, I think this next time around we'll have a little bit more of like a structure of how we're going to talk about this stuff. Uh, but I did like the little rants that me and Skelly got into. So, uh. Because I love my bro. And we're going to get the community um, a little bit more involved. Um, yes. In a few, if not next episode, but in a few episodes. Um, we're going to start live streaming on Twitch So yeah. while we record. So you will see us on YouTube um, every Friday. Or we'll do this every other week, most likely. Yeah. But, every um, other week. Every other Friday. Friday, we'll be launching a new video um, in the Face Off series. Um, and when we do record the previous night um, on Thursday... We will be on Twitch, get you guys involved, give us your opinions, you know, we'll try to get some stuff to give away um, while we're doing it, but definitely um, looking forward to doing more of these with getting you, you the fans involved. Totally. I'm really, really down for that. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, Skelly is always I right, love you, bro, but I disagree with you. <laughs> I'm always wrong. Um, but uh, I really hope you guys like this kind of face-off aspect. Uh, there was a few little heated moments to where I disagreed with Skelly and he disagreed with me. And, and that's the reason why I've always, you know, me and Skelly have always got along so well is that, you know, we can, we can have these debates uh, and, and not fanboy out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I fanboy uh, out about Warcraft every day. I know you do. I know you do. Uh, but just shout-out to all you guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, and check us out at secondopinionpod.com for the latest gaming news, previews, and much more. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Peace.